evening. Um, so, as Sarah mentioned, my name is Guppy. Um, who here travels on the train line between Brighton and London? Yeah. So any of you could have been here instead of me, but I'm just going to take the opportunity to tell my story and also hopefully make you laugh a little bit. Um, so when I arrived this evening and I got taken into the green room, um, Lloyd actually uh, mistook me for a train driver and <laughs> I understand I'm wearing quite a cool blue dress and I have a pin badge which is from the Beyonce concert earlier this month. Um, but I am only a commuter, um, a forlorn commuter and um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, yeah, my thoughts on the train system. So I moved here in September. Um, I came from Oxford. Uh, Oxford's really well serviced by both trains and a bus route. Um, so I was feeling a little bit like, oh no, I hate having to go on the train all the time because the bus is brilliant. Uh, and I just didn't really think it was going to be as bad as it has been. Um, and one of the people that I read recently who actually describes uh, the sort of the situation currently uh, is a guy called Mark Steele. He wrote a really great article in um, The Independent a few weeks ago. So I wanted to read out this because I just thought it was brilliant and hilarious and depressing all at the same time. So, Southern Rail could be praised for being bringing people together. At Brighton Station, uh, you can see crowds of people uh, larger than any that you'll find in a carnival in Brazil. They surge around the streets chanting, not again, every proxy, beep, beep, day, they're all beep, cancelled, creating a delightful harmony that drifts across the sea. Sometimes they playfully tease their customers by taking them all the way up to London and then bring them halfway back down again, <laughs> before conking out, giving uh, thousands of people the unexpected joy of discovering the flora and fauna of Haywards Heath car park, <laughs> whilst they wait for a replacement bus. Southern Rail are running a fascinating human experiment, making a contribution to the world of philosophy because so many of their trains never arrive on any day that millions of people engage in lengthy discussions as to whether they actually exist. <laughs> uh, and indeed, uh, I have found myself arriving at the train station wondering where the trains are, and often now I go without even bothering to look at the timetable because you have no idea when you're going to get to where you want to go. Um, and my experiences have led me to, to situations where I've been stranded on the train for over two hours without any food or water, uh, sweltering in the heat. Um, I compromised my wedding vows because I've been crushed up so closely to other people. <laughs> I'm sure that's not what my partner was expecting me uh, to do. And um, he's in the crowd, by the way. Uh, I have also built a reputation with my friends in London for being one of the most unreliable people ever, that my social life has just gone completely downhill. Nobody invites me out anymore because they know I'm never going to make it. But that is nothing in comparison to others. There have been people who have suffered panic attacks on the trains. They've had job losses. They have to relocate their houses to be able to meet the requirements of their jobs and their family. They've gone under financial constraints because of the extra cash that's been required for parking fees and extra fares. Um, they've had family disruptions. And I've just read recently that um, a blogger called Penny Pepper, who is a disability rights activist, has just had her life ruined because she's completely unable to um, attend anything on the trains because there's no staff to help her on and off the trains. Uh, and that is exceptionally depressing. Uh, and I also read recently that Southern Rail passengers are suffering exceptionally from mental health issues. Oh, I need a time check. Can you tell me when I've got two minutes? Okay, great. Cool. So, why is this all happening? Well, it's deeply upsetting, everything that I've just mentioned. But what I find most upsetting is when I arrive at the train station, I'm the one who's getting angry at the staff on the front line. And I don't want to be that person because they are not the people that we should be getting angry with. The people we should be getting angry with... Because we're getting angry with them just plays into the hands of the people that we should be getting angry with. Um, it's as if the rail workers uh, really enjoy staying on the train so much that they just delay the trains for the sake of staying on them for even longer and want us all to enjoy it too. Um, or that they feel like a day hasn't been fulfilled unless they receive some kind of abuse. But that's obviously not the case. Southern Rail's parent company, Govia, is led by a mediocre white man called Mark Horton. 
I think that's his name. Um, and he is responsible for um, what's going on. He is an ex-boss of another failed franchise called Connects. So you've really got to wonder how he went from one failed franchise onto another. It just kind of carries with him. How did he end up being able to go into this position? Well, that's just the role of a mediocre white male, it seems. Um, the government paid for Southern Rail's passenger complaints fines. So there is no incentive for Southern Rail to do anything to improve the passenger uh, situation at the moment because the government have got it. So there's a lose-lose situation with the government completely in the way that our system is set up right now. He is accountable, he is accountable to no one other than his stakeholders who have uh, received ample amounts of money from their shares. Uh, and it just feels like a really bad situation. But before we think that this is just one rotten apple in the basket, this problem is systemic. And it is a result of our privatised rail system that is held up by the Conservative Party values um, of neoliberal economic policies. And it's the government that is supporting uh, Southern Rail to continue the strike, as, uh, continue the struggle and the disputes in the way that they are at the moment, because they're using it as a way, like they did with the doctor's strikes, to cause more industrial um, dispute and also to, yeah, deflate the power of the unions and therefore deflating the power of workers. And that just feels really dark and really dangerous. So, um, along with all of that, what can we do about it? Well, if you're a commuter, I guess it's really important for you to understand what's going on in the background and what's happening and why um, disruptions, too much while why the disruptions are happening, um, and also to just not get angry with the workers on the front line, although I know it's very difficult. If, you're, uh, if you work in the union, anyone who works in the unions, especially transport unions here, I really want to see the unions like make the most of this opportunity to really work with the passengers and engage the passengers positively, because I haven't seen it, and I'm someone who's really looking for it. So if I haven't seen it, then others wouldn't have seen it either. Like, make the opportunity to buy adverts on the trains, tell people what's going on, be at the train stations to engage with people, and uh, use opportunities in the media to give a different narrative to what's existing at the moment. And that would be really good. <laughs> Lastly, we have to work out a way to set up a system where the complaints go straight to the top rather than to like, the, the staff who are there. Um, because it's the folks at the top that we need to be complaining to, and it's also the government that we need to keep our eyes on. Um, and I wanted to end by saying, uh, yeah, if you do find yourself on the train, just spend a moment to engage the passenger next to you, because for me, it feels like the current situation is a really great opportunity for us to unite both left and right. You've got, like, liberal, lefty hippies who live in Brighton, commuting on the same trains as the businessman from Surrey, and it's like, when do you ever get that opportunity to be like, isn't this shit? Yes, it's shit. Let's do something together. Let's do it together.